You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for August 28th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we can hear you just fine, Kimberly side piece. There is no need to shout. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. The best is yes. yet to oh, come. God. You know, seriously, just like <laughs> trying to crack a planet with that noise. Like, uh, you know, there's no one. It, it reminded me of nothing so much as like the empty um, Senate chamber where Newt Gingrich yeah. would give speeches. Mm-hmm. And C-SPAN basically made Newt Gingrich. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. it let yeah, on, in a tight photo, in a tight um, video, it showed him giving these sort of stirring, you know, barn burning, kill the liberals, you know, take their property, salt the earth speeches. And you didn't notice that it's in front of a completely empty house. There was mm-hmm. nobody else mm-hmm. there. He would just go in when there was nobody there, give these, you know, hysterical over the top rants like, and man, that new Gingrich, he he really gave him what for, didn't he? Oh my God. But now see, now we know that the, right. this crazy bitch was just shouting at clouds, which is what they do now. Um, well, but I, I think you really hit the nail on the head about Newt Gingrich. We're just going right into it here. Sure. Um Back when you said, you know, he took the room temperature of the intelligence of the average Republican congressman and realized, oh, my God, I'm so much smarter than these folks. Yeah. And I'm going to teach them how to use language. Yes. To mesmerize people, to actually program brains, program stupid brains to Mm -hmm. think Democrat equals evil. Right. And when you if you can get people to think that your opponent is simply Satan then you win. Yeah. And we have seen Newt Gingrich's project unfold this week. I mean, I've been looking at posts of mine from 2007 and realizing, wow, there's so much that just hasn't changed at all about the Republican Party. Well, it is, it is, you know, it is, if you vote for Joe Biden, your children will die in a fire of you know, violence and starvation and urban yeah, violence, filth. Yeah, you know? <laughs> the, the dirty commie, liberal, yeah. armed, you know, terrorist, socialist, loving, Marxist. Like, wait yeah, a minute. isn't that the campaign that Dick Cheney ran? Yes, it is. It's, yes, it is. Chapter verse. It's you know, if you vote wrong, kids probably going to die. Just letting you know. Just wanted you to put that out there. That mm-hmm. was the vice president of the United States saying that. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the problem that you have. This is where you, I must expose you as the liar that you are, even though I love you. <laughs> you you talk about uh, looking at posts from 2007, but everyone knows, Blue Gal, that history, history began in 2015. History be, it's, it's just everybody knows that. Every, everyone has agreed. Everyone <laughs> across the board has agreed. The new rules are. Uh, there's an entire article uh, in in Vox today by uh, a, a young man named Ezra Klein. You might have heard of him, uh, mm-hmm. which Ten Grain very politely says, "Oh, he's he's plagiarizing Drift Class again." Again, yes, <laughs> yes he is. Uh, but yeah, and he's like, "Oh my God, the Republican Party is is resetting the clock, and it's always year zero, and now it's they've reset the clock to 2015, and and before that nothing happened, and yet there's this whole history of like the Iraq War that set up." the Republican party to become the thing that Donald Trump took over and mm-hmm. Republicans just, and, and neither side of the Republican party wants to talk about this because well, and what I find fascinating too, is that Newt Gingrich was on our television this week. Yes. yes they, they had him on Fox and friends sure. from Italy because in a very mob move, mm-hmm. you know, Donald Trump took the leading Republican senior statesman that mm-hmm. he sees on Fox News, Newt Gingrich and Mitch McConnell, mm-hmm. and hired their wives. Yes. And put their wives where he could keep an eye on them. Are you talking about Matt Schlapp again? And Matt Schlapp. <laughs> yeah, there you yeah. go. Matt yeah. Schlapp's wife mm-hmm. works at the Trump White House. Yes, he does. And, and Mitch and, McConnell's wife works at the Trump and White George, House. And George Conway's wife works at the uh, George Conway's wife works at the Trump until this week. And uh, Don Jr.'s whatever. 
uh, is has employed a thousand dollar a month job is employed. And yeah, no, Eric's it's... wife has a fifteen thousand dollar a month job. I think that's a little different. I don't think that's to keep his sons in line. I think that's mm-hmm. just to make the family ha- have money that doesn't come out of Donald Trump's pocket. This is this is looting the RNC. This is and... if you are a loyal Republican from back in the. Reagan days, let's yeah, say. Let's say Reagan days, yeah. You should be horrified that your party is being looted by the Trump family. The $15,000 a month to Kimberly Screamy Pants. But again, I must remind you that yeah. all of that happened before 2015. <laughs> and and really, it's all... And, and there, those are... I, and I'm, I say this lightly because if I said it with the amount, amount of heaviness in my voice that it it uh, requires or it deserves. Mm-hmm. I just be sad all the time. Yeah, um, yeah. The new rule. I mean, I watch NBC. I, I MSNBC. I skip in and out of it just because that's part of my job. It's part of yours too. Um, the new rule appears to be on MSNBC. And I'm I'm not exaggerating. Is it? It's like having a, a Soviet minder when you visited the Soviet Union. You, you'd you'd be assigned someone uh, who would who would make sure that you. Only saw what you were supposed to see, and only did well, what you were supposed to do. A lot of people think Melania is is Trump's handler. Oh well, on MSNBC, you know. yeah. um, the new rule is you must have at least one person from the Lincoln Project on every panel, yeah. or two, and you must not have anyone on that panel who will mention the fact that history began before 2015. Right, right. And so you get this weird, this surreal behavior, this surreal scenario where you have Michael Steele on. Just like four different shows in a row. Right. And and, on, and because it's from his home because of coronavirus. Right. And because that's... everybody knows Mikey Steele and Michael Steele just going on and on about how people who collaborate and people who went along with the racist and just history will be a vicious judge of you people. And I'm looking at, you know, Politico from 2008, 9, 10 going, oh, aren't you the guy who was kissing Rush Limbaugh's ass, who apologized mm-hmm. to him, who groveled to him, who said, I'm sorry, Rush, I didn't mean to offend you. You're an important person. You're a voice of our party. Isn't that the same fucking guy who's now telling all the other collaborators that history will judge them harshly and take away their their security blankets and 401ks? You seem to have done okay. Well, and I then- want to compliment you again. This is why I wanted to talk a little bit about Newt Gingrich, because my angle on Newt Gingrich this week was – you know, here is Fox and Friends mm-hmm. deciding during the week of the Republican National Convention when you should have acting Republican senators on. Yeah. You should have acting Republican congressmen. You should have members of the cabinet. You should have the campaign chairman yeah. on the air talking, right? I mean, these are people traditionally you would have a series of surrogates lined up to talk about your candidate. I mean, they did last week. They had a bunch of people on the air talking in complete sentences about Joe Biden. To talk about your candidate and your party and, and your, your policies and what you're going to do for direction. America. Yes. Exactly. And and so who did Fox and Friends have on for more than one segment, I believe? Mm-hmm. Newt Gingrich. Yep. Well, and the reason they did that is the same reason that they're having, I think, Michael Steele on, is this is the way to fill a slot with someone that speaks in complete sentences and says things that that are in sound bites mm-hmm. that don't make waves, that he's not going to call Donald Trump, you know, a fascist. He's not. No one is going to go off the, the trail of what everyone expects them to say. Of course not. But and that, the idea that you would need to get Newt Gingrich, who's in Italy. Yes, with his wife, and, who's the Vatican and ambassador. Vat- the, yeah, blowjob queen wife number three, hat yeah. tip 10 grain, yeah. is the ambassador, ambassador to the Vatican. This is her ticket out of purgatory, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And Newt Gingrich put on makeup and got a haircut mm-hmm. to go on Fox because mm-hmm. his brand insists upon it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, and, and think and, about that the the two mm-hmm. the two pillars, the mm-hmm. two absolute um, unshakable pillars of Republican messaging of right. the people who frame the Republican Party, the two sturdy door jams that that frame the door frames that that hold the Republican Party together from the inside, the political side and the media side, mm-hmm. have been the same two guys 
for 30 years. For 30 years. It's been Rush Limbaugh on the outside defining Mm -hmm. what libtards and feminazis are trying to do to America, destroy Mm -hmm. it and make all your kids gay and become a communist hellhole. And Newt Gingrich um, taking all of the same language, all the same hate, all the same racism and tinkering it into the Republican political common vocabulary so that every Republican now speaks this way. And you can see how thoroughly Gingrich and Limbaugh and then later Fox and all their imitators and on and on has polluted the Republican brain because even never Trumpers cannot escape their vocabulary. Right. They right. can't say liberals were right because mm-hmm. then they would be out of a job. So instead, you have Michael Steele. I'm going to go back to him one more time mm-hmm. on MSNBC. And the one thing he gets there is an absolute ironclad guarantee from Phil Griffin that there'll be nobody sitting across from him who will ask him any questions about the shit that's coming out of his mouth. Or well, why well, he actually had to leave the RNC. I well, mean, yeah. The bondage theme nightclub. No one's going to talk to him no. about that, well, right? <laughs> and I, and the bondage theme nightclub was hilarious. But <laughs> his, the story he tells now is the one that interests me, which is yeah. I personally drove out all the racists from the Oh, yes, there was a Southern strategy. Oh, yeah, there was. I, I'm not going to lie about that because you can trust me. I'm Michael Steele. But I personally, like St. I said last week, like St. Patrick and the Ir- and Ireland, I drove all the racists out of the Republican Party. They're all gone. During my tenure, then I was mm-hmm. viciously deposed by by evil conspirators, and all the racists came back. But during the four minutes when I was RNC chair, no racism, and <laughs> it's like, okay, that is such a childish, ludicrous story told by someone who was hired as a hype man because he was black to stand right. in front of a racist party and say, "See, we're not racist. We have a black." Mm-hmm. That guy mm-hmm. is now scot free. He gets to tell whatever fucking story he wants about the history of the GOP and how righteous he is and how he's a fucking hero. And you know what else? He's a real Republican, Blue Gal. I'm not giving up the Republican Party. I'm not giving up conservatism. You know why, Blue Gal? Because Donald Trump is no conservative. Donald Trump is no Republican. He certainly won every fucking Republican, you know, primary he was in practically. He won all the Republican votes. He's got the support of the Republican Party. But somehow in Michael Steele's brain, he's really not a Republican. Michael Steele's a Republican, which is why he's on MSNBC, lying about his own history. Again, because he has an ironclad guarantee that the only people who will talk to him there are fellow never Trumpers who need to help him prop up that lie because they all they all share the same kind of lie or Friendly liberals who just think we're all in this together and let's not bring up any unpleasantness about the past. Mm-hmm, and that's, mm-hmm. how, you know what? Not bringing up unpleasantness about the past and let's just let this slide and let's let's not look to the past. Let's look to the future is exactly how we got Donald Trump. Yeah. So let's go on to the RNC, shall we? The actual convention? Yeah, yeah. I just, I wonder though, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of this from Michael Steele's perspective Good luck. for a moment. How did of- you look? Well, no, but you, you're you're looking at it that he has a high position because he's on MSNBC on every show. And I'm looking at a guy who was lieutenant governor of Maryland, mm-hmm. had a, had actual political office, one political office, and became chairman of the Republican committee, national committee, and was running things and and believed that he was a somebody. And now his job is to sit in his living room, Mm -hmm. his well-dusted for TV living room, Mm -hmm. and wait for whoever the daytime host is that's going to ask him to say the same story over and over again. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, that's one of his favorite, you know, Mm -hmm. filler phrases. Yeah. And he has to just keep saying he he is there to fill five-minute slots on a network that is not of his party. Right. Well, he's a guy who so, humiliated himself so badly during his right. RNC chairmanship that right. he stopped going on Comedy Central. He stopped going on the John Stewart show, the Daily right. Show, and right. they had to put a puppet on instead of him because he was <laughs> exactly. fucking, he was a he fucking coward. On. <laughs> and I, I agree with everything you say. Yeah, and yet, I mean, he's, he's sixty-one years old. He, the mighty have fallen. He right. is not. He is not what he was. So that, I'm just well, trying I'm, to 
have uh, I'm trying to demonstrate empathy because there's so little of it in politics these days. I have no empathy for Michael Steele. And I'll tell you <laughs> why. I'll tell you why. If he wanted to go on ESPN and lie about sports, that's fine. If you yeah. want, if you want to go on a, a house flipping show and talk about how he it's personally... harder to lie about sports though because the results oh, are this... are right there and there oh, aren't no. a lot of willing people. There aren't a group of people who are ah. willing to believe the lies. Well, like now there let's are let's, let's separate that statement. Okay. Um, there aren't a lot of people willing to support it. That's more or less true. I'm not a sports guy, so I don't know. The, the The stats are what they are. The games are what they are. Yeah, the stats are what they are, and the games are what they are in politics, too, which is why yes, they, they don't are. want to fucking talk about the past. Because if you start right. talking about the Republican Party under Michael Steele, this is the party that hired well, and, Alan. And Andrew Klaus, the stats of how many people have died of coronavirus is a real thing, too. Sure. And the Republican Party doesn't want to talk about that. But it's not the so. Republican Party who's not doing this. This is MSNBC who's doing this. Yeah. These are people yeah. who are supposed to be on our side who are desperate desperate who were so desperate to to win the favor of this tiny tiny fraction of a fraction of people and you know i i joked yesterday that nicole wallace who now has her own show and good for her has reduced the entire bush administration to one word mm -hmm. and that word is my former boss you know who you may have who, who you may have feelings about or whatever you may think of him. Yes. yes. My former boss, whatever you may think of him. You mean George Bush, the guy who destroyed the economy and launched the Iraq the war, war and left yes, through right. a hurricane? Yeah, yeah, whatever you think of him. You know, but he had some good points. And that is the point of having these people. Obama likes him. I know. Hey. She gave, he does paintings now, you know. He gave him a, key, a candy. And yeah. that's, that's my problem. It's not that Michael yeah. Steele is a pathetic character who has fallen from a high place. And he is. Um, I, I, I would... I would like to ask him about Alan Keyes, <laughs> you know, yeah, I said, now, how yeah. do you feel about Alan Keyes? I mean, pretty much your party, uh, the candidate for, uh, for Senate in Illinois dropped out and your party's first fucking reaction was got to find a black guy, got to find a black guy. Hey, Alan yeah. Keyes, let's run him. Alan Keyes, who was nuts by any standard in any decade, completely fucking nuts, but he was black. So we'll run him. And he got slaughtered by a guy named Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. And it is such a habit with them. Find the freak outsider of the group that we hate hire them to stand in front of the group and say they don't hate us. Michael Steele is either a moron who didn't realize that the Klansmen behind him didn't really love him, mm -hmm. or he was just a fucking opportunist, a m fucking mercenary who said, yeah. I think, I think he's a marketer like a lot of them. I think he's he's a business lawyer guy who's yeah. willing to go out on the golf course or out on the you know, in the country club and shake hands and talk about how great the Republican party and, is and what we're going to do about taxes. And, and, every and, and every time you see you a know. Michael Steele or a Tom Nichols yeah. or a Bill Crystal, you're seeing a, you're seeing a seat being stolen from a liberal mm -hmm. who should be on there talking about the Republican party in context. These people are, are there to, to deny the past ever happened. Absolutely. And that scares the shit out of me because it's yeah. not like it's an accident. It, ha if it, it happens over and over and over. It happens. Well, and this is kind of what shocked me yesterday when I said to you, mm -hmm. oh, my God, we're, the media is making the same mistakes they made in 2016. Not a mistake. And you said, it's not a mistake. Not a mistake. <laughs> not a mistake. And, and yeah. I, yeah. you know, I mean, just take Chris Hayes, for example. It's a little bit of a side. Chris Hayes on Twitter is a righteous liberal. Oh, my God. Can you believe what the media is doing now? Chris Hayes on MSNBC is like, let's not talk about all the shit I talk about on Twitter. <laughs> you know, like, well, what happens? Well, when you walk in the door, you work for Phil Griffin and Phil Griffin right. doesn't want you talking right. about this shit. And right. he, he's paying to put my kids through school and, and buy me a nice house in Park Slope. And that's that's my loyalty. So I will go as far as I can go in this extremely constricted environment to do what I want to do. But I'm not going to sit here and tell, tell you that Joe Scarborough is a lying sack of shit because that would be the last day I would work here. Even mm -hmm. though wink, wink, nod, nod, we all know Joe Scarborough is a lying sack of shit. So I'm watching this extraordinarily surreal denialism that was exactly how this shit happened in 2014, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. Exactly mm -hmm. the same way. We're mm -hmm. just going to pretend that Hillary Clinton is just as bad as Donald Trump. We're all going to pretend that disruption is a good thing. And, and all of us on the outside screaming, please don't do this. Please, please do not normalize well, people. And, and pretending that somehow the pageantry of the Republican convention being held quite illegally at the yeah. White House well, is perfectly okay. Let's yeah. let's get down to that. Um, yeah. the, the RNC this year, uh, in my notes, <laughs> I, I, yeah. my, my note to myself is that reviewing it is almost beside the point. Yeah, I uh, think so. It's, it's a shitty TV miniseries. 
It's beamed in from an alternate reality that's unrelated to our own in any way. And it's designed to whip up the moron racist party base. And it's focused entirely on Donald Trump, who has been called in the last couple of days, a builder, a visionary, the richest man in the world, the <laughs> guardian of America, the bodyguard of Western civilization, the best is yet to come. And, you know, I watched this thing. I was thinking about what the proper analogy is. I've watched this thing like the scientists at the Trinity site watched the first nuclear detonation mm. from a mile away in a trench with dark glasses, facing away from it with my yeah. feet forward, knowing that, oh, shit, this is going to be so bad. This mm -hmm. is going to be so bad. It's going to destroy everything in its path. I don't want to look directly at it. And in, in this case, I well, have what's interesting is a lot of Republicans don't want to look directly at it either. No. There's an, even even Trump's base are, is not watching this week. They are no. not watching. Well, what, and yeah. this is this gets at the sort of the problematics I'm having being mm -hmm. a, a good pundit. I'm not a pundit. I'm, I'm a, more of a vocabulary analyst. I look for the hidden biases in languages and the hidden biases in, in media. The obvious stuff is is easy. Anybody can do that. You look at Fox like, oh, God, Fox mm -hmm. is state <laughs> propaganda. You don't need me to tell you that. Um, even though there's now books and books and books going, oh, my God, can you believe Fox is propaganda? Yes. Yes, I can. Um, and for children or people who are very slow to the to the party, I guess that's important. Um, what's What bugs me, and I, I know it shouldn't because these are my friends and allies, but it does bug me that a whole lot of my liberal friends are now still incredulous that Republicans are Republicans. Yeah. And they yeah. still feel the need to rev up these huge, fist-shaking, fact-based rebuttals. Fact-based rebuttals, which they know, they got to know on some level, do no good whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You might as well be arguing with the cinder block. There's nobody there. I understand the impulse. Believe me, I'm a liberal. I understand the impulse because coming to accept the alternative, that these people are just fucking zombies, and they're always going to be zombies, and they can never be reached, and they can never be saved, and they're going to go on keeping doing horrible, horrible shit until they keel over dead, is such an affront to the basic enlightenment values yeah. of reason yeah, right. and uh, tolerance. Let's, let's talk about that for a minute because yeah. there's there's that. There's the enlightenment sensibilities that we're all human beings and we all do, our voice should be heard, right? Well, and, and, and reason and persuasion and facts, you we'll know, work. mean stuff. Right. right, right. And we can reason together and come to a conclusion. And these that's people will glare on... at you and say, fuck you. I don't care about facts. Deep state, yeah. deep state. Fake news, fake news. And that's just, that's the. Why are you voting for Trump? I don't know. He makes me feel safe says the woman sitting in a pool in Florida with mm -hmm. no mask on. Right. I mean, yeah. there's that. There's also the need for mainstream television, particularly to cover drama. Right. And there's no drama in the Democratic Party. No. Especially now. Goddamn there's no Democrat. drama. <laughs> Goddamn Democrat. It's, well, yeah, no, because we're not fighting amongst ourselves. No one in the Democratic Party is going to change their mind or stay home this year. No. Uh, sure. Out of disgust for the system or whatever. But what about uh, disruption? What about disruption, honey? Yeah, right. Yeah. I uh -huh. mean, it, that's it, that's just not present. It's just not present. You're going to – what what I think is going to happen, and we saw it this afternoon. By the way, we're recording this on Thursday. Right. There is a plan to record a podcast with – Hal Sparks tomorrow, Friday. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping you're going to get a double dose of the professional left. Um, there is also severe thunderstorms tomorrow as uh, the hurricane moves north. And we're, we're going to get just the edge of it mm -hmm. here in Springfield. But uh, they are talking Friday afternoon, severe thunderstorms. So, you know, our, there's all kinds of things that could happen. Our power could go out. You know, things could happen. So we're just mm -hmm. going to see what happens. But we are recording on Thursday. And, and we are extremely conscious of how lucky we are that we're not in california we're not in the gulf coast yeah we are we are well relatively and i safe. have relatives in houston and yep. our angel nerd is in um austin who where the hotels are full yep. <laughs> because of the evacuations yep. uh we're thinking of everybody you really are there and over there and and where you are uh but not just the enlightenment part of can we reason together but the drama and I think one of the things about the drama, um, the drama that is going to come is going to come from Kamala Harris. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and we saw that this afternoon, Thursday, yes, where she just came out and chapter and verse, you know, <laughs> gave she, Donald Trump a whooping. She, she Perry Masoned his ass. Yeah. <laughs> she Perry Masoned his ass. She yeah. certainly did. 
Uh, and and more like that, please. I think you, I think that's going to bring uh, the cameras around. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about the Mask of the Red Death? Oh yeah. Well, you know how much I love Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe. I know big you fan, do. Big fan. Wrote a story about how he really died in, in science fiction and never got published, but I'm pretty proud of it. And I visited his home, and you know, I'm I'm not quite a Poe scholar, but I'm amateur. And I've used the Mask of the Red Death as a an analogy before. And this RNC really was, the, the actual convention really was as if someone had rewritten the Mask of the Red Death to give Prince Prospero and his pals a super happy ending. <laughs> because it was like <laughs> it was it was okay, we're gonna we're gonna weld the castle shut, we're gonna wall mm-hmm. us off. There's a plague sweeping the country, we're gonna wall us all off from the world, and we're gonna have a party and pretend nothing's happening, everything's fine. And and in the end, of course, in the story, I'm going to spoil for you a story that's more than a century and a half old. Uh, the, math, the, the Red Death gets into the palace and kills them all. Uh, in the super happy RNC version of it, everything's fine. And everyone mm-hmm. goes home and has a great time, lives happily ever after. That's the convention they're having. They're having mm-hmm. a convention in which the rest of the country simply doesn't exist. Yep. And it is astonishing that that is um, uh, p- carried without... Uh, comments by most people and it is also a natural end state of the direction the republican party has been headed for decades mm-hmm. that they just mm-hmm. have detached themselves from the rest of the country from reality from facts from criticism from the reality-based community and are now holding a, a wholly fictional uh, uh uh worship session their own nuremberg rally yeah. uh, in which the 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 uh, i think it was larry kudlow who's now talking about the coronavirus in the past tense Right. Well, and he's um, talking about the the economic devastation from the coronavirus in the past right. times too. Everything's we're, great. We've Donald Trump's created more jobs than any president in history. Yeah, yeah. And if you, everyone's if, like, "There's 27 million unemployed in the United States." Oh right. no, the, no, that's yeah. fine. Everything's great. And, I want to I want to bring up another analogy though that's very similar to what you're saying. Uh, sure. You and I are watching. Uh, the eleven twenty two sixty three. We are. Series. Yes, we are. Good show, by the way. Uh, it's a time travel story, and I'm not going to spoil it at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, the The main character finds out that when he tries to change history by going to the past, that history pushes back. Yeah. And there are people in the past who who will all of a sudden say to this character, "You don't belong here." And it is as if history is popping up in spite of his effort to to keep it quiet. Right. And I see that happening this week with the Republicans. You talk about them locking themselves and sealing themselves off. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what the Democrats did was produce a show in the context of coronavirus. Yes. And everything that you saw, you remembered while you're watching it, the reason it is this way is because of coronavirus. Yes. And you can say, well, this is better. They, the way they did it this way is better. And maybe we should keep this wonderful roll call thing where you get to see the whole country. That was wonderful. Mm-hmm. Maybe we should include people who've actually been helped by the candidate and let and, and a lot more plain folks kind of thing of actual Americans, not in a big auditorium, not party faithful, not right. office holders. Average people like yourself getting to talk about politics and how it affects their lives. Yeah. That really makes an impact. It's, it stuck with us. Yeah. And it stuck with us. And mm-hmm. you look at it and you say, okay, maybe we'll hold on to some of those techniques for future co- yeah. conferences, for future conventions. It would be calamari. More representatives from the Republic of Calamari. <laughs> I think that's important. I think They're underrepresented. Having chefs out there on the beach is really important. Yeah. yeah. Um, but – This week, you have the opposite. You have a gala event at the White House, which is illegal. Yep. Where everyone, no one's wearing a mask. No one's been tested. Everyone is simply pretending everything's great. Everything's fine. No one's Mm going to get sick this week. Mm -hmm. And the only reality is Donald Trump is wonderful. Right. And what happens? We have a hurricane. Mm -hmm. We have... An unarmed black man shot seven times. Mm-hmm. We have uh, the practically the entire Republican establishment endorsing Joe Biden on mm-hmm. Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, and things just keep coming into the reality. The, the, the reality um, Media Matters did a chart like they always do of 
how much air coverage, how much live coverage and how much simply airtime do the networks give the Democratic convention versus the Republican convention? The purpose of that article is to point out that Fox News goes wall to wall coverage for the Republican Party yeah. and does not for the Democrat. Mm -hmm. But they had to footnote all of it this week because they had to say MSNBC broke in for the hurricane. Mm -hmm. MSNBC broke in because a teenager decided to be wanted to be a wannabe SWAT officer mm -hmm. and shoot three people. Yeah. And that was breaking news and we have to cover that. Yes. So and it's also drama. I mean and and I'm not trying to diminish what has happened in Kenosha at all. No. I'm no. simply looking at it from a TV production standpoint. You know, if it bleeds, it leads. Mm -hmm. You have to cover those kind of things. So the fact that the numbers went down for the coverage of the Republican convention have to do with <laughs> history and humanity and uh, the the whole zeitgeist of our time saying, you don't belong here. You don't belong here. Pushing don't belong back. This, this show, mm -hmm. Donald, the Donald Trump is great show doesn't belong here yeah. in the news world. Well, can uh, I? Can I suggest one more analogy? Yes. Um, you know, months and months and months ago, I did a, a Photoshop of, of uh, Donald Trump as the mayor of Shark City. Yes. Mayor of Amity. <laughs> saying, oh, what are you? It's a, it's a hoax. I'm, it, everything's in fine. Jaws. Right, in Jaws. In Jaws. Yeah. In Jaws. The RNC is if it's as if a year later or months later after 170,000 shark attacks, <laughs> <laughs> they're going to hold the RNC waist deep in the water off of Amity <laughs> and pretend while, while their fins are circling out there, dozens and dozens of sharks in a feeding frenzy going, everything's fine. Everything's yeah. fine. And they're still pretending everything's fine. And this is what is true. This is the fragility of, mm -hmm. of all the Republicans. As I'm hearkening back to what, um, what uh, Ezra Klein wrote, this sort of pre 2015 is now off limits. Mm -hmm. Pre 2015 suits everybody. Because the Trump people don't want to talk about the past. They don't want to hear about, you know, the, the old days. They don't want to talk about Bush. They, they want Donald Trump is a new thing and here he is, et cetera. And the expatriate Republicans, the Michael Steeles and the Charlie Sykeses, don't want to talk about the past either. So it suits everyone. And, and the media just, just shit itself, just screwed up completely. Um, and they don't want to talk about the past. They don't want to mention that they were all in about disruption and both sides do it and how awful Hil Hillary's overprepared. Nobody involved in the fiasco and the catastrophe that was 2016 wants to talk about the past. It's the fragility of, of all Republicans everywhere, whether you're a, a Trump Republican or an anti-Trump Republican or, or a, a new Republican or a whatever. Every one of them, all of their worlds are so fragile. If, if any fact gets inside of the Trump bubble, the whole thing collapses. If anything gets inside the never Trump, it wasn't us, we had nothing to do with it, it started in 20, it all collapses. But if you're a liberal, w w go ahead, give us your best shot. <laughs> what are you going to say about us that's going to hurt us? Yeah. And that's what's yeah. terrifying about dealing with all of these people is if you're dealing with people who are, who are living, whose life is devoted to protecting a big lie. Um, you always figure it out really fast. And, mm -hmm, and if mm -hmm. you're dealing with a Republican, again, I'll, I don't mean to pick on Michael Steele, but Michael Steele is living a big lie. Yeah. And he yeah. and his whole psychic universe is devoted, is bent to the to purpose of defending the psychic lie that 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 keeps culpability and judgment at the hell away from him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and so that's true of a whole bunch of people all across the conservative political spectrum. And that's why none of them like to hang out with liberals because we bring yeah. up shit all the time. We talk about this stuff all the time and we're not afraid to talk about this stuff anytime they want. If you're dealing with people who have a worldview that is, can be shattered with the slightest touch, there's a guy named Tim Alberta, mm -hmm. who's a chief political guy for uh, Politico. And he wrote this big, long article this week um, that, that everyone, lots of people were talking about called um, the, the GOP, the Grand Old Meltdown. Uh-huh. So the Republican Party uh, is screwed up and the Republican Party is melting down. And, oh, my God, can you believe how bad things are? And he went on the um, Charlie Sykes podcast to talk about it. And there was this exchange between them that because I listened to them, as I said, as I listened to uh, enemy broadcasts. And it it was so bizarre listening to these guys talk because 
what they were talking about was what about ism mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and Charlie Sykes went on this long riff and and uh, if you don't mind me just reading one paragraph on this okay this is from Tim Alberta's article uh, as quoted by Charlie Sykes which is to be a Republican today requires that you exist in a constant remind you a Republican today mm-hmm. requires you to exist in a constant state of moral relativism turning every chance at self-analysis into assault on the other side, pretending that the petting zoo next door is comparable to the three-ring circus on your front lawn. Now, I will pause there and mention (laughs) that I have had interactions with Republicans, with conservatives, going back decades. Mm -hmm. And they have been doing this for fucking decades. Every time that I hear a stupid talking point about George W. Bush and Dick Cheney or Barack Obama or Michelle Obama for years, for years and years and years, and I tear it up and throw it in their face, the first fucking words out of their mouth is, Both sides. What about about the Democrats? Right. The first joke I ever wrote (laughs) on the internet was back in... 2004, as a commenter at the news blog, if Dick Cheney were caught red-handed tossing burning kittens at homeless veterans from the White House lawn, what would be the first three words out of Cokie Roberts' mouth? But the Democrats. This has been endemic. This is how the conservatives survive. This is how this has been their battle plan for as long as I've been uh, an adult and aware. Is when you get caught, you, you invent some fucking sin liberals committed over there somewhere. Now, mind you, Tim Alberta and Charlie Sykes are both lifelong Republicans. I guarantee you, on Charlie Sykes's twenty-seven year old year radio show, he has what about it more than a million liberals. Mm-hmm. You know, when someone brings shit up, it's always going to be what about the moochers? What about the liberals? What about uh, Nancy Pelosi? I guarantee you, he did that a thousand times. But now, the two thousand fifteen is the new beginning of all history. Charlie Sykes says, this is really the constant state of moral relativism where every conservative I feel I've had interacted with for the last three years (laughs) immediately switches to what about ism to change the subject. Well, yes, everything you're conceding on every point might might be yes, that's true. But the Democratic Party is so much worse and so much more dangerous. That's become that's become a reflex. That's a way of life. That's the governing principle right now of the Republican Party. The key words here are. Right now, today, the last three years, everything with these fuckers is it it isn't us. We didn't do it. This all started three years ago and we got nothing to do with it. And it is maddening to see how widespread it is, just as it was maddening to see in 2009 and 10, Mm -hmm. the rise of the Tea Party. Yeah. And the and the and the the rise of, of Reagan Republicans after Nixon utterly shit the bed. Mm -hmm. And the corruption was waist deep in the Republican Party, in the Republican White House. There should never have been another Republican president ever. Never. Well, and and, but that's that's the thing. After Bush collapsed, Mm -hmm. that was the moment when when Republicans should have been grabbed by the hair and dragged out into the sunlight and punished and marked Mm -hmm. in some way and said, Mm -hmm. you guys can never, ever, ever fucking govern again. You're terrible at it. You suck at it. You kill everything you touch. Stop doing that. Mm -hmm. But they were allowed to scuttle away into the woodwork and regroup under the the, the rubric of Tea Party. And they were allowed to contact friendly journalists who said, there's this new political movement out there that has nothing to do with the Bush administration. They're called the Tea Party. And they come roaring back. And I swear to you- a whole lot of money from, mm -hmm. you know, Dick Army- Raising and, money off of, you know, who, whoever, whichever billionaire dark money they got to do that. Right. I, I might be overreacting. I, I will admit that. But I have seen the Republicans scatter, mm-hmm. deny, and regroup mm-hmm. over and over and over again. And oh, what I hear. Do it again. The Lincoln Project is that party. That yes. is that is what is going to happen. And, this and, is going to be the Republican establishment reasserting themselves as the true party. He never and they'll the call themselves Lincoln Republicans or whatever mm-hmm. and uh, run whoever they're going to run, Tom Cotton or whoever they think they can get to uh, mm-hmm. be elected. Um, I want to talk for a minute about vocabulary. Yes. We're jumping around our notes a little bit, but that's all right. Uh, it's not just Republicans on MSNBC doing this. No, it's not. So there is a whitewashing going on of Trump's Republican Party mm-hmm. this week in particular. 
and particularly the law breaking in terms of the Hatch Act. Mm -hmm. Now, I, for one, can envision an, a normal White House saying, look, there's a pandemic. Right. Look, we have a problem. We, we can't hold our convention in a big convention hall. And they could have done it the way the Democrats did it. But if they say, look, we really want to have an in-person convention, we're going to have 100 people at our convention. We're going to test everybody. And assuming it's a Republican who does not own a hotel down the street from the White House, OK, right, right. says this is a pandemic. This is a national emergency. Nancy Pelosi, would you and your congressional representatives please pass a dispensation for us? Right to hold our convention outside the White House in the Rose Garden where it's safe and where we will test people before they come in. We will limit the, pro we will social distance and we can do, we can actually have, you know, a, a variation on the Hatch Act for four days. And it's not like this guy owns a massive estate in Florida where he spent. Right. I mean, there are other time. places. Yeah. This yeah. is this is the I'm 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 living in an imaginary world where there's a reasonable Republican who wants oh. to obey the law. <laughs> you're living in you're living in Aaron Sorkin's universe. Right. Okay, well, exactly. Well, exactly. Okay. And, right. where, and where where uh, the White House staff has not habitually broken the Hatch Act and for three and a half it. years. Yeah. Right. And laughed about it. Right. Um, but that but. The complicit nature of the media, and as you say, this is not an accident or a mistake. This is They are doing this on purpose. Mm -hmm. The Associated Press wrote about Melania's speech in the Rose Garden, mm -hmm. despite questions about the propriety of using the White House for an overtly political purpose. Right. There is no question about propriety. <laughs> the Hatch Act is a law that passed in 1939. And the Republican Party broke that law this week. Yes, it did. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. And if Barack Obama had broken the law in this way, as I said on Twitter, and I apologize to our listeners who are faint of heart, but Sean Hannity would have lit his dick on fire and written Fox Alert with the flames. Yes, he would have. If a Democrat decided to hold their convention at the Rose Garden. That's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Um. I also want our listeners to watch out for the word controversial. Yeah, that's that's a that's a controversial word, Blue Gal. So <laughs> it's not a controversial no, it's not. word. It's really not, not at all. If you're writing controversial about Republicans, it usually means racist or illegal. Yes, or both. And or it's a topic that the the reporter or purse anchor on TV is uncomfortable talking about. Birth control. Yeah. Birth control is not controversial. 99% of women use it. No, exactly. It, controversy means that there's a relatively uh, equal or a, you know, generalized division in opinion among people over a topic. Yes. Abortion is controversial in that, yeah, there's 40% of the American people who would never have one. Right. Right. OK. So, yes, that's a controversial issue. It is not. Birth control is not controversial. Uh, the Hatch Act is not controversial. It's illegal what they did. It's illegal. Well, and it took <laughs> it took what the, the network's years to start using mm -hmm. the, the L word lie. Lie. When, right. When, Barack, when, right. When, when Donald Trump lies. Right. Um, they just wouldn't do it. They, yeah, well, the fact someone based... pointed out today, Drift Glass, that. You know, by the time they get to using the term fascist, yeah, there will be a law against them saying it. Yeah. Well, by the time they get around to saying fascist, Jared Kushner will be president. So right, right. You know, they're, they're always slow to the party. And I think actually uh, our friend, the rude pundit, uh, mm -hmm. summed yeah. up the whole Hatch Act thing very well um, when he said, basically, the impeached president is going to violate the law by forcing others to violate the law. To watch him talk about Law and Order tonight, <laughs> <laughs> not Law and Order the TV show. No, either. no. <laughs> but it's just and uh, this week uh, I'm going to go down uh, in, into the news area. But it was Mark Meadows, White House chief of staff, oh, yeah, yeah, who, who took all these accusations that Donald Trump is in fact breaking the law and knows it and just doesn't give a shit. He doesn't um, give a shit. No, said yeah. about the Hatch Act. Um, nobody outside the Beltway really cares. Fuck you. Laws don't the, matter. The Laws fact don't matter. That, and, and this was a, another article at Media Matters. I'm sorry to quote them so much, but saying, you know, if you're a reporter and you think this issue matters, talk about it. Yeah. 
It's, <laughs> don't pretend that nobody cares because people care about what they hear on TV. Deeply. And Donald Trump knows that. Uh, before before we switch over to the news roundup, let's go over our notes. There's a couple of things I wanted to point out about the Republican convention that you might not have thought about. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I owe Carolee, my colleague at Crooks and Liars, uh, hat tip for this. Um, I was questioning why their roll call, the Republicans' roll call, was held during the day. I thought that was just an absurd thing. Mm-hmm. You know, where is your event planner? You know you're supposed to have the roll call during prime time so right. anyone that's watching can watch it. And Carolee pointed out to me that, no, no, they know they've got three hours at night of live coverage. And Trump wants... 12 hours of coverage. So Mm -hmm. he held the important things that they would break into their coverage to cover, that they would break into their day to cover. He he held those during the day. Right. So then they'd have to have the empty Trump podium on the TV Mm -hmm. and wait for him and have their roll call and and have it during the day. I've already got my three hours. I'm going to fill that with whatever. You're going to have a camera on me for that. Yes. Yes. Uh, so he, if of course they wanted to cover the roll call, so he just had it at ten in the morning or whenever he had it during the day. The other thing, the other huge regulation issue, uh, you know, they say breaking with norms. There's another <laughs> euphemism for law breaking, guideline breaking. Uh, Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State, broke the Secretary of State regulations and held a speech in Israel for the Republican National Convention. Mm -hmm. And yes, he wants to run for president in 2024. But he was also playing to an audience of two. Yes. Sheldon Adelson and his money. Yeah. And uh, there was a documentary about the 2012 race where where they were uh, showing... Republicans going to Las Vegas for their debate, but they were really all there to kiss the ring of Sheldon Adelson. Yeah, Sheldon Adelson, a a, a corrupt, um, the mortal remains of Sheldon Adelson. <laughs> yes, still, still sort of chew around on his little on his little trike. Uh, yeah. has has a shit ton of money. Is a right wing crackpot. Um, millions of dollars to Republican candidates and, or Republican and has has done it for years. Has done it for and years. Has done it for years. And does it very much as a quid pro quo. Yeah. I want you to stay out of my casino business overseas. Right. I don't want you to tax me too much. I want all the regulations that I want so that I make the most money. And here's what you're going to do for my friend. And I can hire Yahoo. all the all the the you know slave labor that I want overseas yeah. for my casinos. And, yeah. And here's what and here's what you're going to do for Bibi Netanyahu, my good friend. Right. And and, and that's the other thing. And, and he, moving. Moving the embassy to Jerusalem mm-hmm. was for Sheldon Adelson. Yeah, that was, uh, and Shelley was there mm-hmm. for that. You know, he, he so, made the effort to go. And so Mike so, Pompeo returns the favor by doing his speech for a Republican convention with the the uh, backdrop is the skyline mm-hmm. uh, in of Israel, Jerusalem of Jerusalem. Yeah, and that, yeah, that's it just it's so. Completely fucking inappropriate on so many levels. And well, don't but it was care. specifically for Sheldon. And and the thing about that documentary in 2012 mm-hmm. was listening to Sheldon Adelson talk about the candidates. Right. And he said, I can't do anything with Marco Rubio. I ask him for something. And he says, well, we'll have to check with the congressional leadership right. and we'll have to mm-hmm. do this. I asked Newt Gingrich and he says, yeah, we can do that. Yep. And of course, Newt Gingrich is in Congress, right? Doesn't matter. But he's running for president, and he's just going to tell Shelley Adelson whatever the hell he wants to hear. Yeah. Yes, sir, Mr. Adelson will do it. And so that was Shelley Adelson's horse in 2012 mm-hmm. until he dropped out, was Newt. Because Newt said, yes, sir, Mr. Adelson, I'll get you what you want. Well, because uh, that's want- what he's paying for. Yes, it is. <laughs> It is. And he wants it wrapped up in a bow and presented to him personally. And this is what Donald Trump has done well, because he understands marketing and he understands quid pro quo. You be nice to me, I'll be nice to you. He's a mobster. Yeah. And Um, so he he understands how to do that. And and that's where why he is where he is. At at the other end of the Republican food chain. Mm -hmm. I want to do one more thing before we talk about the news. Right. Um, I want to talk about the effect of all of this on the ground here. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Just 
three little encounters I had this week, uh, either in person or uh, secondhand, that uh, when you have COVID-based encounters with conservatives and Republicans in the real world, um, at least here where I live, it's a lot like the first reel of every zombie movie you've ever seen, (laughs) which is like something weird's going on over in the corner over there or up ahead in traffic, and you're not quite sure what it is, but it's probably not good. But nobody ever connects the dots to notice there's a huge systemic danger that's building up. It's just a series of isolated incidents that everyone's like, that's kind of weird. That's kind of bad. That's that's kind of shitty. Um, so this just happened the last couple of days. A woman I know uh, who helps run the farmer's market here in town. Nicest, sweetest young lady you ever want to meet. Um, cheerful, upbeat, let's go Springfield kind of person. You just You just love her to death. Um, was working the farmer's market on Wednesday, a uh, cranky old woman came up, took her mask off, coughed in my friend's face and said, Oh my God, I've got COPD and then treated her like shit and then left. Um, just because fuck you. It just, I want to take this out on somebody. The goddamn liberals are making me wear a mask. Pritzker is making me wear a goddamn mask and I'm going to hurt somebody because I'm mad that, that I have to wear a little piece of cloth over my face. Look, I have asthma. And I have um, I have anxiety attacks. This is drip so, class talking. Yeah, I have me asthma. Personally, right. I have asthma and I have anxiety attacks every now and then. So putting a piece of cloth over my mouth is not the best thing for me. But I do it. I do it because I'm I, I do it to save your life and you do it to save my life. It's as simple as that. I'm not asking. No one's asking me to to strap a gun on and play sheriff. They're only asking all of us to put a little piece of cloth over our face when we go out. You know what? This bitch didn't need to go to the farmer's market. Whatever was there, she could have ordered. But she decided she was going to go out today and make someone miserable because she's she's mad that Pritzker and the liberals are making her wear a mask. Um, Second, I'm at at the local store today, the Hy-Vee store. And I'm walking through there and everyone's nice. I know them by name and we're nodding to each other and we're we're keeping our distance. And it's and there's this one woman in sweats and a t-shirt, 25, 30 years old, just skulking around, looking mean, not carrying anything, not doing anything, not shopping, not picking anything up, just sort of like sneering at everybody she walks through. I go about my business, I leave the store, and there's this large gentleman who, uh, when we do curbside stuff, picks up the heavy stuff and puts it in our our, our van. And now he's outside. And you know what? Masks cover almost everything, but they don't cover the eyes. So you can see his eyes just fucking rolling back in his head. Because this woman (laughs) was outside (laughs) screaming and yelling and ranting. and She went out of her way to go to a place to behave like an asshole. Mm -hmm. Because she's a fucking conservative. She's a MAGA. She's a Republican. And last but not least, I run into a, a local business owner in the parking lot. Guy I've known for years. Um, I don't know if this happens to you because you, you may or may not live in a community where, where people don't know what each other's political affiliations are. They suspect, but they don't know. And this guy is, is, is sort of pinging me for information Hmm. (laughs) and I'm sitting there just, I'm, I'm leaning sort of down and, and he's in the car because he has clearly about 40 different comorbidities. So he's in the car while his wife is shopping. And we're just talking about business and stuff. And he says, by the way, uh, this, the virus is going to be over on election day, right? And I say, no, this, this damn thing is going to be around at least another year. Oh, oh, okay. Talk, 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 talk. Well, you know, swine flu wasn't so bad. I mean, what, what, <laughs> what, what the fuck is with this? I mean, no, no. And I said, swine flu. And I went through the whole thing. You know, they didn't have a tw- two week latency period and you didn't have people spreading it who were non symptomatic and by the way we had people in this country who took it seriously took that shit seriously and mm-hmm. stopped it in its tracks and blah blah oh okay well, I guess I... what about these shortages are everywhere i mean what's with this stuff and it was clear he was like i am a fucking wing nut i believe everything donald trump says but i'm not sure what you believe i mm-hmm. know you from business i know you from the community but i don't know what you think so you get these little pings these little sensor pings like are you on the club are you with me and every time it was like no everything you believe is fucking wrong everything you believe is not true everything you're complaining about is bullshit okay well let's talk about the weather and that's the community that i live in and that scares the shit out of me because Mm -hmm. there are people out there who are just snapping at this point who are Mm -hmm. just out there people who you wouldn't look twice at 
under normal circumstances who are out there looking for trouble. And mm-hmm. then you have people who are who are in their van, can't really go out, can't really move around much, but who really deeply believe everything that they're told on Fox News and hate radio. Right. I mean, it's, right. I look into this guy's eyes and I see just nothing but a bottomless pit of Fox News talking points. And I'm like, dude, I don't even know who you are. I, I, I Well, you know, and it's kind of like back in the day of the news blog, the, the line was fuck the fucking Yankees. Yes. Yes. It's almost as if. If being a Yankees fan actually killed you, yes, <laughs> act, or actually spread a disease, and I'm sorry to shit on the Yankees, no, but no, they have more money than God, and yeah. fuck the fucking Yankees is the line. So I don't follow baseball, so I I'm just going to use them as an example because mm-hmm. they're the richest team in baseball, is my understanding. Um, so you find out that your team, the Yankees, if following them following their team and following their scores and so forth killed your mom. Yeah. Killed somebody's cousin Mm -hmm. wound up killing 180,000 people. And for so many of these Republicans being a Trumper is a team sport to own the libs. And, you know, you're always right. And we're right. And you're wrong. And we have a flag and a hat and a Jersey and a, riding it on a boat and we're just fans of donald trump we are fans and you're finding out that your fandom has killed 180,000 people and yeah it's gonna make you snap a little it's gonna make you hopefully if you're human and like you say some folks are just so deep into it that nope nothing's happening here everything's great i feel safe because donald trump is president and that's normal well you know, I, there used to be once upon a time. This is going to mm-hmm. come as a shock to you. I used to go out to the bars, and every now and then there'd be some little guy, and it was always a little guy mm-hmm. in the bar to start a fucking fight. And <laughs> you just, can't fight with a. You're six foot eight. You're not I, allowed to fight with I, anybody. I, I, because you're the loser. Because they look over and say, "Oh, the big guys pick on the little guy." But there's always, yeah. you know, not always, but a lot of times, there's some asshole at the bar who is there to start trouble. Well, and and alcohol has that effect on some people where they're mean drunks. I mean, that's why I had a relative who got his jaw broken over that, you know, well, that's why, that's yeah. why a good bartender and a good bouncer know how to keep that under control. Calm, right. You now right. have an entire political party who is the asshole at the bar looking to start right. a fight. Yeah. And and the, the problem I have with the idea of tribalism and polarization, which is a term that's used way too often, is and I'm not going to misquote Rick Perlstein here, but it's this. Polarization carries with it this this idea that two opposite and equal poles. Mm-hmm. And and tribalism is like, well, there's the red tribe and the blue tribe. No, mm-hmm. there's the fucking lunatic tribe and the normal people tribe. And mm-hmm. they're not equal at all. One of them is bad, full of bad, stupid, angry, racist <laughs> people who are fucking up the country. The other one isn't. So yeah. the idea that it's just tribalism. Well, yeah, if you ascribe to the term tribalism, being the member of a group, my group is the one that wants to have clean air and clean water and decent leadership. And leads in science and, and science. you know, is willing and, to debate the issues based on all of that. Right. And, well, you said to me before, uh-huh. you know, that if, if 60 million Republicans somehow got sent away on the B arc yeah. uh, to outer space, we'd still have a two party system in this country. Yes, it would be the Hillary Clinton Republic, Hillary Clinton Democratic Party and the AOC Democratic yeah. Party. And, and they would be- fight and debate and be wrong about things. And uh, we would have arguments and we might even hate the other side from right. time to time. But there would be an understanding that, you know, clean water for people is kind of a good that's, thing. Let's see how we can get that. That's a good thing. We should work on that. We should definitely yeah. work on that thing. And you know what? Racism is bad. And there's a thing yeah. called systemic racism. We like school. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and we'd all sort of agree to disagree about how we get there. And we'd fight and fight and fight and fight. That's fine. That is, that's a healthy um, – because a two-party system will always have two parties in it. There's just no right. way for a third party to exist in this country viably except as a spoiler to the other two. There right, just isn't. Right. If we had a parlamentary system, it would be we different. We had a parliamentary oh, we system. Don't. We'd love it. But yeah, oh, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So here we are at our news roundup. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, another one million Americans filed for unemployment insurance benefits last week. That's not true. It was the greatest economy ever. It's just he's, the best. he's created more jobs than any other president in history, right? Grave digging <laughs> jobs, mortuary jobs. 
Um, Trump claimed without evidence, that means lying, that the problems with mail-in ballots on election day will come from election officials who are going to count them wrong. Yeah, lying. Lake Charles, Louisiana voted 10 to 5 to leave up the Confederate South's Defenders Monument. But yesterday, womp womp, Hurricane Laura toppled it. (laughs) I, I don't believe in the vengeance Mother of God. Mother Nature is part of the resistance, I, right? I, I will smile when it looks like God's on my side. Let me put it that way. <laughs> uh, you mentioned this already. More than 100 former John McCain staffers have announced their support for Joe Biden's candidacy. You know what? However, I don't think it's going to make any difference at all. Um, it's just... Because they all live in the Beltway in New York City? or uh, they well, you, Every paper in the world endorsed Hillary Clinton. Right. No, I know. And, and, I know. And the, the sides are now, this is trench warfare. There's, there's, it is. And you might get one or two, and maybe they can get one or two. Yeah, that's the thing. Each the thing. in Arizona, that might help. You yeah. know, that might help to have some Arizona voters switch over. Uh, White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows dismissed accusations that Trump administrative officials violated the Hatch Act by speaking at the Republican National Convention, saying nobody outside the Beltway really cares. But he sure cared when Al Gore did it. He sure as shit did. Yeah. Um, Meanwhile, at the FDA, the FDA, quote, grossly misrepresented data about the use of blood plasma therapy to treat coronavirus patients, according to the Center for Pharmaceutical Policy and Prescribing at the University of Pittsburgh. This, in turn, forced the FDA commissioner, Stephen Hahn, to walk back his previous statements and apologize for overstating the benefits of such treatment. Han also pushed back against Donald Trump's lie that the deep state is deliberately stalling coronavirus vaccine development at the FDA. And and it's a shame that on Fox News, they were unfortunately running the Republican National Convention wall to wall live coverage. So they had no time to mention this to any of their viewers. Yeah. And this is this is the real sickening, um, it is. Well, well poisoning, destroying society from inside. It's. We're going to destroy the credibility of the people that you look to to tell you whether or not the water you drink is safe. And whether, whether the vaccine works. Yeah. And and you know Donald Trump is going to announce a vaccine on Halloween. You know sure. he is. Sure. And there won't be one. No. But wrecking the credibility, you know, forcing them, they don't, you don't have to do it, you can quit. But forcing people mm-hmm. to say things that they know are not true and then walking it back and then attacking them afterwards muddies the water to the point where nobody is quite sure who to trust. And that mm-hmm. chaos is lethal, and it plays directly into the hands of the Republican monsters who want to wreck this country. Meanwhile, at the CDC, not the FDA, the CDC, via the New York Times, the CDC was instructed by higher-ups within the Trump administration to modify its coronavirus testing guidelines this week to exclude people who do not have symptoms, even if they have been recently exposed to the virus. The whole point about this coronavirus is you may not have symptoms and still be spreading it. Yes. That's what makes it so dangerous. You don't know if you're sick. Then the CDC abruptly changed its COVID-19 testing guidance to exclude people without symptoms who have been exposed to COVID-19. Then, less than 24 hours later, the CDC director walked back that recommendation. Now, in a statement to reporters, he says testing may be considered for anyone exposed to the virus. Mm -hmm. And this is when governors just throw up their hands and say, look, you know, and if you're a good governor, if you're a Democratic governor who wants to contain the virus, Mm -hmm. you test absolutely everybody that you can. Yeah. You just start pretending the rest of the country doesn't exist and you start looking after your state. Meanwhile, at the University of Alabama, the university ordered faculty to keep quiet about its recent COVID-19 outbreak. And apparently they have more of COVID-19 ca- cases at the University of Alabama than the entire country of Norway. Yeah. Um, but lying about it will sure help. In vote by mail news, the FBI says it has no evidence of any coordinated fraud schemes related to voting by mail this year, undercutting repeated claims by President Trump and his camp about what they've called security problems. The intelligence community said there is no information or intelligence that foreign countries, including Russia are engaged in any kind of activity to undermine any part of the mail-in vote. This disclosure contradicts Trump and Attorney General William Barr, who have repeatedly lied, falsely claimed is lied, Mm -hmm. that foreign adversaries are targeting mail ballots as part of a rigged presidential election. 
Twitter flagged Trump's tweet that mail drop boxes are a voter security disaster and not COVID sanitized. Yeah. He's such an asshole. Yeah. Labeling it a misleading health claim that could potentially dissuade people from participation in voting. Is this the time that I should talk about the mailing that my dad got? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. My dad got a mailing from the New Hampshire Republican Party. He does not live in New Hampshire. It was a mailing encouraging him to vote for Donald Trump and encouraging him to vote by mail and providing for him two postcards that he could fee and his spouse who's passed away, but two postcards for registering to vote by mail, to get a ballot to vote by mail. That postcard goes to the clerk in New Hampshire. My dad lives in Pennsylvania. He has never lived in New Hampshire. Also, this postcard doesn't seal up. You don't fold it in half and mail it. It's just a postcard that you mail back. So on this postcard that you're going to mail open with the back of it fully readable by anybody, you have your name, address, any disability information as an excuse for why you can't vote in person, your signature, and your phone number. And that really flipped my dad out. He was like, this doesn't have any privacy protection at all. Right. Plus... This is New Hampshire. Plus, I've never voted de- Republican in my entire goddamn my, life. I'm a registered Democrat in Pittsburgh, and right. they're mailing this to me. And, and this is, you know, days after a Trump-appointed judge in Pennsylvania demanded from the Trump administration proof of voter fraud in Pennsylvania, and they couldn't come up with any. Right. Don't forget that Corey Lewandowski is from New Hampshire. Yeah. <laughs> also, don't forget that Donald Trump pardoned Roger Stone, who was known for rat fucking. Hmm. This is either an effort to get to garner, uh, you know, names and addresses of people who might vote Republican by mail or worse, a way to disenfranchise Pennsylvania voters, Pennsylvania Democrats, by proving that they attempted to vote in two places. That sounds you, a lot more likely. That, it's just it. And we have contacted, there's a reporter that's writing about it in New Hampshire. Uh, I have tried to contact the uh, attorney general in Pennsylvania about it. Um, Charlie Pierce did get back to me and say, this is, this really stinks. This is really weird. Yeah. Uh, but there, they, don't, don't be surprised. Watch your mail carefully and see yeah. if there's any rat fucking going on. You know, there is. So, well, yeah. And all you need is, two or three senior citizens who are not paying close attention right. uh, to get this in the mail and fill it out because you know, it looks official. And right. suddenly you have, oh, look at this voter fraud. This guy from Pittsburgh is trying to vote in New Hampshire. Trying to vote in New Hampshire. Oh, my God. Why is he doing that? Well, right. Voter fraud in, in Pennsylvania. Let's shut it all down. Right. And it, and it would be inconceivable except for the fact that a criminal enterprise is now running the country who is hell-bent on – who is just lying now publicly – who lies about voting mail, who lies about voting fraud, who lies about pandemic, who rips the country off blind. I mean, these people are absolute criminals hanging on to their only hope, which is immunity from prosecution. Cheating their way through the way they did last time. Yeah. And, and yeah. they're hanging on for dear life because they know that what waits for them after their drag from power is a whole bunch of people like Kamala Harris raining subpoenas down on them and dragging them right. into courtrooms and demanding they testify. Yeah. And guess what? Under a Biden administration, I don't think deciding you're not going to testify is going to be an option. Nope. Um, you know what? I, I was invited to testify in front of Congress, but I thought, yeah, no, I don't think so. I think, uh, I hope at least, it's going to be a lot more harsh than that. Um, yeah. The RNC, there is an open spot in the RNC schedule, by the way. If your dad I want to speak. <laughs> well, now that your dad's a registered Republican in New Hampshire. <laughs> in New Hampshire. Um, <laughs> yeah. He, he can occupy because one of the scheduled speakers had to drop out after she promoted a wildly anti-Semitic and QAnon conspiracy theory on Twitter. In a desperate and feeble attempt to win her father's good graces, Trump's forgotten fourth child, Tiffany, made a rare appearance last night at the Republican National Convention where she trashed the media and compared her dad to God. Yeah. She also said she she totally understood where people were coming from, coming out of school, looking for a job. Yeah, yeah. she understands. Yeah. <laughs> daddy, love me, daddy. Sorry, that, that ship. Your, your brothers have tried for years. He doesn't love anyone or anything on this earth except money and himself and whoever he happens to be fucking at the time. Um, the NBA, the National Basketball Association, uh, the players have grabbed the microphone with a playoff walk-off. 
And that mm-hmm. was big enough u- news yesterday to interrupt everything and say, yeah. holy shit, they have decided they're not going to, they're going to postpone playoff games until the issue of systemic racism is addressed. Mm-hmm. And more, this is so awesome. I, yeah. I just, because it blew people's minds. I, uh, Connor Friedersdorf, who is just a terrible person and one of Andrew Sullivan's protégés, was on Twitter yesterday complaining that this is just not the way to do it. You know, <laughs> um, just, you, pl- you know, play <laughs> basketball. This is the way to do it, folks. Yeah, play the sport. Nothing gets a lot of Americans' attention than an interruption in sports. This is when coronavirus became real for a lot of yeah. people. Well, he said, can't you just accomplish this much more, like, less intrusively and less aggressively by talking about this? No, in, like, don't black and- people want to listen to Connor well, Frieder sort of tell them how to protest? Well, yeah. that, my, my point being that um, he's advising them that they'd, they'd be much better off talking about this in the pre- and post-game shows. And I'm sitting there going, you're in the media and you really yeah. don't have the fucking first clue about how media actually works. Yep. They got the attention of everyone in this country. Absolutely. Got, for all the right reasons, you yep. dumbass, you, you insulated. And they don't want to be a servant to right. a country that treats black people like this. Well, and this is what happens when players have leverage. Exactly. When the owners can't just LeBron is around. taking over the NBA in large part. He's really taken the reins. And he's a he's got something that Donald Trump doesn't have. He has leadership skills. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And and he has dem- and he and he can walk down a ramp without being afraid. So <laughs> that's great. And and applause to the WNBA players yes. also who wore shirts with bullet holes in the back of them. Uh-huh. They canceled games in protest. The Washington Mystics team members wore white shirts with a letter each to spell out Blake's name on the backs. The shirts had seven bullet holes representing each time. The 29-year-old black man was shot by police in Kenosha, Wisconsin on Sunday night. Players from the Mystics, Dream, Minnesota Lynx, Connecticut Sun, Phoenix Mercury, and Los Angeles Sparks all took a knee and linked arms on the court during the national anthem in Bradenton, Florida, where the teams are staying in a bubble to prevent coronavirus infections. After the anthem played, they walked out. Just as importantly, WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelberg said of the players' decision, we absolutely support them. Yeah. Yeah. That that made that made the hair on the back of my neck, which is yeah. not ample, let me tell you, yeah. um, stand up. It was just like, this is what happens you, when you've gone too far. When management and labor are willing to go on a strike together. Yeah. Because the issue is too big to ignore and too too dangerous to let it lie around anymore. And it's been a long time since a strike mattered. I mean, Oklahoma teachers, yes. Um, mm-hmm. Kansas teachers, it mattered recently. But um, Ronald Reagan destroyed unions' ability to strike during his administration. And we haven't had this since. And it is time to get back to strikes. Well, and a lot of people don't know what it looks that. like. I mean, yeah. you know, my grandfather passed his union button down to me. Right. Um, oh, I know. You know, the I know. Kind that you, you, ha- you sort of flip open and let people know to let you in the door because you're, yeah, you're right. a member. Um, yep. And it was just my you dad know, was asked me, you know, yeah. as a state college professor. Absolutely. All right. Leave no pocket unpicked. Trump's reelection campaign has paid his private companies at least two point three million dollars for rent, food, lodging and other expenses. According to Federal Election Commission filings, Trump, the the supposed richest president in American history, has yet to donate to his own 2020 campaign. Um, This is from the Washington Post. Trump has now visited his own properties 270 times as president, according to the Washington Post, with another visit planned for Thursday, where he's scheduled to meet GOP donors at his Washington hotel. Those uh, through trips, Trump has brought the Trump organization a stream of private revenue from federal agencies and GOP campaign groups. Federal spending records show that taxpayers have paid Trump's businesses more than $900,000 since he took office. At least $570,000 came as a result of President's travel, according to Post's analysis. Now, new federal spending documents obtained by the Washington Post via public records lawsuit give more details about that, how, about how the Trump Organization charged the Secret Service, which is kind of a captive audience, required to follow Trump everywhere. In addition to the rentals at Mar-a-Lago, the documents show the Trump Organization charged a daily, quote, resort fee to Secret Service agents guarding the vice president in Las Vegas. And in other instance, asked agents to pay a $1,300 furniture removal charge during a presidential visit to a Trump resort in Scotland. Because 
there's just and this is the guy who holds up his paycheck says i'm giving all this back to the american people right. i'm not taking and, a dime and, and they buy it boy yeah. those mega folks buy it he's not taking a salary so we should just be grateful he's there yeah, yeah. He's they don't want to hear this that the taxpayers are being charged almost a million he's, bucks he's stuffing yeah. his pocket with both hands all of his cronies are God and again knows where- if you're a reagan republican you should be if if you're Shelley Adelson, you should be outraged. Well, you know, as long as you're you taking get your my card. donations to the Republican National Committee and you're stuffing your pockets with it, mm-hmm. uh, Kellyanne Conway and George Conway are both quitting their day jobs for family reasons. And uh, we don't really need to talk about. We have teenagers in this house that are difficult. Uh-huh. We understand that, and I have, I do. Again, speaking of empathy, I think Kellyanne Conway is a horrible person. Yes. But mom to mom, I totally understand that she is quitting her day job. First of all, it's probably an off ramp that she's glad to take at this point. Uh-huh. Uh, but teenage girls can be a challenge. <laughs> Let me just say that. And uh, so uh, and and not to get into any of that, because that's not our job to amplify that kind no, of but uh, see, gossip. Here's yeah. here's two things that can be true at the same time. Mm hmm. One, Kellyanne Conway is a deeply, deeply evil human being mm-hmm. who should roast in hell. The other <laughs> is that she's a mother who has a tr- has trouble with her children and is taking time away to deal with a family problem. Both yeah. of those can be true. And can I can hold both of those time. at the same time. Yes, I yep. can. Um, you know what else can be true at the same time? What? Local news. Rodney Davis, our congressman, for a couple more months, we hope he's going to lose. <laughs> we do. Uh, he can be... Both uh, a bad congressman who decided to destroy our health care multiple times with his votes Mm -hmm. uh, and a quote unquote loyal Republican and also a congressman who will not say publicly and enthusiastically whether he's voting for Donald Trump. Yeah, that that the thing that cracked me up again on on local social media, which can be hilarious, is Mm -hmm. uh, Rodney Davis, our, our Republican congressman who has whipped votes for Donald Trump, who votes with Donald Trump, who supports Donald Trump, who is well, bundled he was and given whip, money. He was a whip for um, Ryan, yeah. for Paul Ryan. Yeah. Uh, who yeah. Is, is a loyal Republican stooge, you know, as we call him, yeah. inert carbon Rodney. Um, he wanted to be in leadership. He really did. He wanted to be in House leadership. Yeah. He will not say if he is voting for the leader of his party. Mm-hmm. And local social media, uh, the Rodney supporters are like, that's a gotcha question. That kind of question is inappropriate. <laughs> Are you, you know, going to vote for the leader of your party I'm is not a gonna, gotcha I'm not, question. These kind of gotcha questions. What I'm, a weenie. I know. What uh, a weenie. And speaking of weenies, uh, yes. Warner Hedge Fund, Bruce Rauner, has fled the state and is uh, relocating to Florida, where I'm sure he has a bright political future, given what a shithole that place is. So <sighs> it appreciates. Politically, it's a shithole. Yes. Right. There are it's some a, lovely parts of Florida. Lovely, but I, lovely people who live there, people who we yes. love dearly. Um, but as a political um, uh seedbed it's perfect. i can't i can't think of a worse governor at this point than ron DeSantis, except no. maybe texas no but bruce rauner goes down there he brings his billions with him sets up housekeeping and says Georgia. You know, yeah uh, put on <laughs> i don't know what you wear in florida he used to wear cowboy outfits here but maybe he'll yeah, dress up cowboy in a bike boots outfit. everywhere yeah and you know and he'll just buy his way if he wants to he's he's a little older so he might not care but um he'll head down he's heading down to florida where he will uh, hopefully spend the rest of his days bothering other people. Thank you, Driftglass. You're, you're welcome, Blue Gal. That's an hour and a half podcast, but that's okay. Next week, we'll do a whole show on the bats that are now back in our home. Oh, gosh. We have bats in our house. Yeah. yeah. Again. We're, we're dealing with it. It's yeah. okay. It's, it's going to be okay. But three bats in 10 days yeah. getting in the house is a little much. Well, and there uh, there, there may be a colony living between the walls somewhere. And that's what we're we're. We're, we've got, but you know what? South Central Illinois has bat experts. It does. We we see <laughs> really now we have does. a we we have a bat guy now, which is pretty cool. We have a bat guy, and we we had animal control come out, and the woman who came out it was apparently a real expert on. First of all, this is bat season. Oh, we, <laughs> oh, I we didn't know there was a bat season. I never, I never knew season. that. Uh, and by the oh, way, yeah, this is bat season. <laughs> the, the listener who a couple of years ago sent us a bat net. I have used that bat net three times so three far. Three times in ten days. Yeah, so I'm 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 greatly appreciative. It's stacked um, up next to my bed, folks. It is. It is. <laughs> and I I used to get out of bed like a rocket uh, when I used to do maintenance, uh, computer maintenance. If the phone would ring mm-hmm. once at two in the morning, I and it was I was up and out. And apparently, bats have the same effect on me. I can just be. On my feet and moving with the thing in my hand before I'm awake. And yep. um, 
it's uh it's a, a little bit expensive i discovered the the bat guy is going to has to do a whole bunch of stuff about exclusion you have to you have to at, at exclusion door exclusion pipe so they can leave but they can't get back in cuz you don't want to hurt them they're very useful animals we just don't want them living here and then you have to seal you know what i think maybe we should do a gofundme for the bat thing that would be a good idea that's not a bad idea or bad it's idea it's expensive that's, it's it really is. expensive it, it really is it's it's more than a you know, car, right. <laughs> more than a used yeah, car. Yeah, it is. It's more um, than a used car for your kid. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. And it, but it's, it's, it's worth it. And we, you know, it's, it's appropriate and we don't, again, you could, I suppose, take a more lethal approach, but these are endangered. They're no, bats are necessary. endangered and they, they're pollinators and it's important. They're, they're very useful. So it's important to do but, it right. You know, and get them it, out of your house correctly. Yeah. Whole, by the way, we can, you know, when in 20 years when we sell this and we say, this is where the professional love podcast used to be. And we'll sell the house for a million dollars. Um, <laughs> We can say, and you know what? It's bat proof. Here's the thing: hundred percent bat thing. proof. We bat proof the house. Bat-proof yeah. The house. Here's the certificate. I have a certificate. <laughs> we bat proof the house. That's oh, good. It's on you, man. Um, yeah. So, uh, and hey, we, we, I, we love you guys for listening this long. Yeah, I mean, I, we appreciate that. We had that. to do a long one on the Republican convention. It's a long day, and we, it's going to be a long we, day tomorrow. We love you guys, and yeah. uh, talk to you later. And and. Keep an eye out for the Hal Sparks podcast because yes. allegedly we're going to be on there this yeah. week. Well, so. you know, you know how. Ha- oh, by the way, one last thing: if you yeah. heard us or met us uh, at the Stephanie Miller sexy podcast thing this weekend, if you ran across yeah. us and are welcome, because yeah. we, we ran into some the weirdest thing happened. Shall I tell this just real quick? Go ahead. Um, uh, this is like the ugly American story, but it's <laughs> hilarious and it's I find it just delightful. Uh, we we talked to a woman. I won't give her name. Who was in Japan, and right. it was like, oh, you're you're Democrats abroad. You live in Japan. Do you know Terry? I know Terry. <laughs> like yeah. really? And it's like the one person you know in Japan. Do you know the other person I know in Japan? Why, yes, we do. Yeah. And of course, well, it, Democrats abroad in Japan is not a huge, wide ranging right, group, right? right? It's, and it's it's tight knit. It yeah. is. It is. But it was so weird to to be that guy. You know, do you well, know the, and Terry is from the news blog days, right? Yes, and she's, well, Terry she's, and and Hubris Sonic um, was yep. one of the people there, and she, but she knew all these people that we knew, and it was just yeah. cool. And she'd not heard of our little podcast, so we actually made some new podcast friends doing that. And uh, we hung out in the chat room with Hal for like twenty minutes or half an hour, and and you saw our faces. I think this is the first time we were on. Yeah, camera together, your face so, in particular. Yeah. I don't think people have seen before. Well, yeah, so. there a lot of people. It was like, oh god. <laughs> Oh God! Don't turn the camera off. I can't no. believe I'm in the same room with Drew Class and Bluegill. Yeah, yeah, you are. You it's are fine. You are. <laughs> uh, but well, if if that's how you're coming to this podcast, you only have 560 to catch up on. Catch up uh, and uh, don't go start. Start at about number 40 or 50. Yeah, don't lose yeah. the first bunch because we were <laughs> not good. We, we we love doing it, and we still love doing it. This is really is just the conversation we have every day among ourselves. It is. With we love each other, and we love yeah. you guys, and yeah. it's just a chatting around the table kind of thing. And now but, that's really the end of this podcast. So, well, as, and and one more thing, and and we just keep talking. But one more thing is, you know, this week is incredibly disheartening because it is nonstop propaganda against mm-hmm. our side. And now it's time for the general election and it's time to fight. And I was listening to a uh, Instagram live with Leslie Jones from SNL, former, formerly from SNL. Someone asked her about stage fright uh-huh. and she said, do it scared. You got stage fright, do it scared. You're prepared. You're ready to go. You know your lines. You've rehearsed to do it scared. Mm-hmm. And I just immediately thought, wow, that's a lesson for all of us as we go into this election. Yeah. We're terrified that Donald Trump's going to be reelected. Do it yep. scared. Do it scared. Vote scared. Go get go yeah. get other friends to vote. Get them their mail in ballots. Make sure they know how to that how to check their registration. Do it scared because yeah. we got to do it. And, so uh, and we're we're all scared. And you know what? Yeah, we're all scared. All we are asking, all scared for our country. All we're asking is that you you vote. You do you do your civic duty and vote, and you help other people vote too. And and you you do whatever you can to get candidates elected. We're not asking you to to storm the Bastille or, or yep. be the first man out of the landing craft on D-Day, just vote. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Nemo. Nemo. Now, in this picture, Nemo is two weeks old. Oh. He's sitting in this picture on the hand of our friend Dogface Herman. Remember Dogface Herman? Hey, Dogface Herman. Yeah. Herman will be adopting Nemo as soon as Nemo is weaned. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Nemo's mommy was very upset that Herman was holding one of her babies for a photo. <laughs> it had to be a very quick little, I'm going to hold the baby up and take a picture. Okay, now you can have her back. Uh, and of course, after his mommy time, Nemo will be ready to eat freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. But right now, it's mommy time. And whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit baby Nemo. He's just a little kitten at our Facebook page and website. You can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Uh, I want to do a shout out to a couple of listeners. Uh, someone sent us a book and someone sent us a coffee mug as uh, anniversary gifts this week. We celebrated our ninth wedding anniversary this month. And uh, so appreciate the the coffee mug was a suffragette coffee coffee mug, which apparently was real coffee chicory back in the day. Suffragette coffee. Uh, and we got a copy of a book called um, How Trump Stole the 2020 Election. Yeah, that's um, uh, George Packer, right? No. Oh, Pallast. No. I'm sorry, Greg Pallast. It's Greg Pallas' yeah. book, yeah. I, and, I get my and, GP authors mixed up sometimes. but <laughs> Dex, Dexter sent us that. We deeply appreciate both of those things. Also, about that mug, um, I had uh, contacted this person who sent us the mug, and uh, their Zazzle store um, is Fabled Labels. And I had written on the envelope, Failed Labels. <laughs> <laughs> I just was writing quickly, and <laughs> apparently the um, children of the owner of Fabled Labels thought that was hilarious. So I'm really sorry that I did that, but uh, I will now promote Fabled Labels on Zazzle. Uh, you can go and take a look at that mug. It is a beautiful mug. I really appreciate oh, yeah. it. It looks elegant. Really cool. Really mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag save the post office. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details, our PayPal postal address information. It's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties cannot wait for the Kushner-LeBron pay-per-view MMA cage match on the subject of how to protest correctly. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020. DGBG Productions.